There are so many talented wide receivers in the NFL right now that it feels almost impossible to rank them. But just because it's hard doesn't mean that we won't do it. And on today's episode of the Regression to the Mean podcast, we have our top 12 dynasty wide receivers heading into the 2024 season. I am your host, Sean Moran, not Morgan for the YouTube commenters. A YouTube commenter on the last video said, that Morgan guy has no clue. No, it's that Moran guy has no clue. All right. And I am joined by my co-host and my good friend and my brother in Pukunakua, Keegan Thompson. Keegan, how you doing, man? I'm good, Sean. I'm good. Yeah, it looks like I avoided a little bit of an onslaught from some YouTube commenters about Aiden deciding to sell Patrick Mahomes in Dynasty. But uh, let's see what the commenters think of my rankings today. And See if I can't get some of the same engagement that Aiden got. <laughs> I promise you, Aiden, like genuinely has never been a big Pat guy in fantasy. So it's not that hot of a take for him to want to trade Pat. Uh, but a lot of people were like, first time ever hearing of this channel, never coming back. Yeah, like, it never was, coming back. It was pretty back. funny. It was pretty harsh. I was like, well, thanks for the feedback, I guess. But um, yeah, it was, I hope it they was, make their way back. Yes, and we're going to record a top 12 dynasty episode for quarterbacks, and we will have That'll Aiden, be fun. and Aiden will get to talk about Pat Mahomes. Before we dive into our top 12 wide receivers in dynasty, two things. If you're a part of the 70% of people who enjoy our channel but aren't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button to make sure you don't miss out on any regression to the mean content in the future. Two, if you love player prop apps like Prize Picks or Underdog, you're going to absolutely love today's sponsor of the Regression to the Meme podcast, Chalkboard Fantasy Sports. Chalkboard's picks game is similar to what you've probably played, but what makes them unique is the fact that unlike underdog or unlike prize picks, you can take alternate lines. If you want to play Chalkboard's picks games, you can download the app with the link in the description of this video and use promo code RTM to double your deposit up to 100 dollars keegan dynasty's top 12 wide receivers there are so many high quality guys to choose from obviously there's going to be some painful omissions if you oh, think yeah. we missed a guy if you think we missed a guy or we're flat out wrong drop your thoughts in the comments below just be nice uh, about it if you're gonna no. comment you're gonna be, be nice about it be mean be mean tell me i have no clue i love it it, fe- it fuels me um the hate i'm i uh, <laughs> I, I love the hate all right keegan uh the format today is pretty simple we're just gonna go one by one and unveil our top 12 you ready absolutely let's do it all right man why don't you kick things off who is your number one rated dynasty wide receiver heading into 2024 I feel like the number one is a pretty easy choice, uh, chalk choice. It is Justin Jefferson, of course. Um, elite production on a per game basis the past three years. I mean, even this year, he still averaged 20 points a game. The year before, 21 points a game. And the year prior to that, 19.4 points per game. He's going to be 25 when the season starts. He had one of the best 23 year old seasons of all time with 128 receptions, 1,809 yards, and eight touchdowns. He's a potential 2,000-yard wide receiver with unlimited upside regardless of situation or environment and like can go absolutely nuclear. I I remember at the beginning of the season, he was dropping casual 150-yard receiving games, and we weren't talking about it because that's the expectation we have for Justin Jefferson. So simple 101 for me. No no funny business here. Yeah, I I had Justin Jefferson as well. (laughs) If we had started without Jefferson, that might have been a little too hot takey. I think the YouTube (laughs) comments would would make sense with that one. Um, In a season where Jefferson played 10 games and he played with four different quarterbacks this year, he was able to earn 100 plus targets, 1000 plus yards, and he was able to average 20 plus fantasy points per game. He's cleared 100 plus targets and 1k yards in every single year of his four year career. He's finished top nine in PPR fantasy points per game in every single year of his career with three consecutive top five seasons. Uh, I'm not really worried if Kurt comes back or not. Jed is, is is the best in the game, especially at his age. So I feel pretty Yeah, I don't really care who their quarterback is. As long as KOC is there too, like that's just yeah. extra security for me. I'm, I'm pretty sold on him being number one. Yeah. All right, moving on to wide receiver two. Um, I think we might have a discrepancy here. Because I, I have a feeling I, of who you're going to go with, and I know who I'm <laughs> going to go with. So I'm I'm curious to know. I think this is where we divert a bit. Okay, one, two, three. CeeDee Lamb. Chase. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 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 So you know, it's a, it's it's really hard, I think, because. I have a tier of top four and like for the fourth player, I have Amon Ross St. Brown, but like Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, C. Lamb, Amon Ross St. Brown, no doubt top four elite in their own tier dynasty wide receivers. Why do I give the edge over Jamar Chase? We talked about this on the way too early rankings episode. If you haven't watched that, we went and pre-ranked the top 50 players for the 2024 season. And I'm relatively high on Jamar Chase and I'll do it again at number two. Going to be 24 this year has averaged at least 16 and a half fantasy points per game every every year the past three years, like just the mark of consistency. And he has the like insane ability to go nuclear nuclear on any given oh, yeah. Sunday, right? Like oh, yeah. the 55 burgers, the, the 40 point games, like things that you just don't see out of even like the elite wide receivers. And also just being tied to Jamar or Joe Burrow, like one of the best young QBs in the league. I, I just give a slight edge to Jamar Chase. He's, He's been a little bit more consistent on a points per game basis the past three years from CD, but it was really hard to choose who would be the second one for me. Yeah, it, it's been kind of a weird run out for Jamar after his historic rookie season when he eclipsed 300 fantasy points because in, in 2022, he misses four games, but yep. he still eclipses a thousand yards and 10 touchdowns, which is which is nuts. Uh, in insane. 20, and I didn't even know how he came back from that injury either. The hip injury. Yeah, he cracked hip, which is insane. It, remember they were literally like he came back faster because he's quite literally built different. That was just, yeah, that was 10 out of 10. Uh, in 2023, he starts the season off super slow because of Burroughs calf. And then he goes absolutely ape shit for like three weeks. And then the season takes a super weird turn because Joe Burrow misses the rest of year with a wrist injury. So it's not been back to back years where he's been productive, but it's just been, just been a little muddy, right? When you compare it to CD lamb, which we'll talk about, purest run out you possibly could have this year for cd lamb like we yeah. have not seen that yet for for jamar chase like on a ppr basis he's finished no worse than 11th and no better than fifth over the past three years i think the looming exit of t higgins and tyler boyd make chase an interesting buy target even if you have him at two or three like he could go absolutely uh, scorched earth if his target competition goes away and his first read targets go up and joe burrow's healthy I think just regardless, very few players possess the ability to go absolutely nuclear, like you said, than Jamar Chase does. So uh, I, I, it's it's splitting hairs between Jamar I Chase agree. and CeeDee Lamb at this point. CeeDee's a little bit older. And, and, and my case for CeeDee Lamb to be wide receiver two in Dynasty, uh, he was the 2023 wide receiver one. Um, he's fresh off of posting career highs in yards, receptions, targets, touchdowns, and yards per route run. The Cowboys, whether you like it or not, are bringing back Mike McCarthy, and Mike McCarthy designed mm -hmm. this entire passing offense around C.D. Lamb, so that's a very big positive for C.D. They're going to bring back Dak and sign him to an extension. I just think there's very little reason to believe that C.D. won't continue to be the focal point of this entire Cowboys passing offense. Now, they might go acquire another receiver to pair with them. Who knows what they'll do, right? But I just want to put C.D. Lamb's 2023 into context because – it blew my mind. CD Lamb's 405 PPR points this year were the second most points scored by a wide receiver in a season since 2013. It is the second best fantasy season a wide receiver's had since Cooper Cup. So at his age, his run out in terms of playing with McCarthy, playing with Dak. I feel pretty good about CD, and, and that's why I had CD above Jamar, who's my guy. I think you made an interesting point about Jamar Chase. Like, what do they do with Higgins and Boyd? And I think one of the reasons CD Lamb was so successful is you said, that, like, whether you like Mike McCarthy or not, you know what he did is he designed an offense that would funnel through CD Lamb. Like, in Jamar's case, that's not always the situation where you have a Boyd, you have a Higgins in the passing game. Like, it's no knock to Gallup and Brandon Cooks. I like both of them, but the offense went through CD Lamb. And I'm all in on that, right? Like that is, he's such a clear alpha. And when you have an offense that's designed to go through you, like you're going to put up monster numbers. And I appreciate that Mike McCarthy like did that. Yeah, I, I it's kind of crazy how perfect of a run out CD had this year, considering Brandon Cooks was probably, best case scenario, should have been a wide receiver three on the team, but he was the wide receiver two. Michael Gallup is like, I, he looked good in the playoffs. He's Michael game. Gallup. But like, basically, Jake Ferguson was the second best pass catching option, in my opinion, in this offense behind CeeDee Lamb. And, and if that's going to remain the case, which it, it very well could be because they have to pay CeeDee, yeah. they got to pay Dak, right? Like, 
unless they're drafting wide receivers, which they very well could, it just seems like this offense is CD Lamb. Like that's who it's right. Yeah. And if you don't like Dak, like that's one thing, but like Dak is still by all means, like in metrics, stats, a top 12, top 10 quarterback in the NFL. And if you compare one of the best wide receivers with somebody like Dak Prescott, I'll, I'll take that every day. Every day. Come on. Dak's had amazing years with Amari Cooper, amazing years with CD Lamb. I'm, Dak has been excellent at, at really elevating pass catchers. And look, I think Dak, as a Niner fan, yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'm buying him winning a Super Bowl or the NFC anytime soon, but this is fantasy football. <laughs> um, and we're, yep. we're, we're trying to get guys who can get you the ball. All right, moving on to wide receiver four here. You said you have Amon Ross St. Brown. I'm going to yes. interject, though, and I'm going to crown Puka Nakua my wide receiver four in, in all of Dynasty right now. This will probably be our biggest discrepancy on this show, have, for sure. Yeah. I have him all the way down to nine. Oh. My friend, you are too low. Okay, and here, here, here is why you are too you're too low, Keegan Thompson. Um, Pukunuku is 23 years old, right? On keep trade cut, he is the fifth wide receiver. So I'm one spot ahead of consensus on on that website. If you if you like that website, right? Some people don't, but hey, it's it's pretty helpful tool when we're talking about value. Pukunuku's 2.746 yards per route run is the second best yards per route run posted by a rookie. Over the past 10 years, the only guy to top him was Odo Beckham Jr. Statistically speaking, he had a better rookie year than Justin Jefferson, clearing him in yards per game, targets per game, yards per route run, targets per route run, and PPR points per game. I think Matthew Stafford and Sean McVay have definitely elevated fifth round Puka Nakua. I, just, I think that is 100% true. But the guy's rookie season was probably the best rookie wide receiver season of all time. I have comped him to Anquan Bolden for his combination of size, speed, hands, and just overall toughness. The guy takes so many hits and gets back up. He is is fearless over the middle of the field. I think he's easily a top five dynasty wide receiver. Now, he is a little bit contingent, like his value, in my opinion, on Matthew Stafford and Sean McVay, right? Because I just think they're, they're kingmakers. They make wide receivers. They really elevate them. So I, I, I understand that it's a little bit more contextual, but I also think he's a hell of a talent. Um, and just the way he plays the game is just, it's a joy to watch. So Puka Nakua is my wide receiver for. What you're saying about Stafford and um, Sean McVay, like the only reason I have him so low is it's one year for his entire body of work, which is not a bad thing. I mean, he set rookie records. He's His prolific receiving play was insane. It, it legitimately was Record breaking, but he is tied to one of the best games, uh, one of the NFL's best wide receiver elevators in Matt Stafford, who's 36. And I don't know what his future holds for. Obviously, I think he's going to come back another year. The Rams will kind it's of run confirmed. that back. Confirmed he's yeah. coming back next year. And, you know, he's a fifth round rookie, kind of like not coming out of nowhere, but you know what I mean? Like doesn't have the same draft capital and all that. Supplants mm-hmm. Cooper Cup as the Rams wide receiver one. Like you want to talk about pure runouts? Like, Puka Nakua had such a pure run out where everything kind of went his way. Cooper Cup gets banged up. He gets to shine in this role, gains trust from the staff, gains trust from Stafford. There's a lot to factor in and ranking. And I definitely think he's obviously a top 12 option. I just couldn't put him above players with a little bit more of a uh, kind of like data backed career that I can reference. But he plays football well, no doubt about it. He's only going to be 23 years old, like you mentioned. And I think people don't think about what an awesome mentor it is to have not just Matt Stafford, but Cooper cup in your corner, teaching you the ins and outs of the games. Like one of the most savvy wide receivers. I even wrote in my notes, like this is probably a ranking that I have wrong, but it was just hard to fit him above some of the other people that we'll talk about next, but I I could easily change him and and move him up for sure. So your wide receiver four is my wide receiver five. And that is Amon Ross St. Brown. Tell us why Amon Ross St. Brown is a top four option in Dynasty. I, you know, the the first tier I have kind of the cutoff is like, it's like Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, C. Lamb, and then Amon Ross St. Brown. Like that is, I think, my tier one of Dynasty wide receivers. And what's interesting about Amon Ross St. Brown is he's not like CD or uh, JJ Chase in the matter where like he probably won't. I think his highest point in like point total in standard PPR scoring is like 39 points. Like we haven't seen him. That's still pretty like large game right but it's not the nuclear level of crazy games that'll win you an entire matchup on their own but the thing is like he's so consistent like he's been the mark of nfl wide receiver consistency since his career started and in 2023 
when we talk about funneling an offense through someone, he averaged more than 10 targets per game. He was averaging about nine yards per target. I mean, with Jared Goff in their offensive system. Now, if Ben Johnson leaves, I don't know if I'm worried about Amon Ra, maybe some of the other offense, but like this is an alpha in his own offense that will get the offense funneled to him, hence the 10 targets game. He's seen his points per game average jump every year. He's been in the league, and he finished this season averaging 20 points a game. He's like one of the few wide receivers that I can put in my lineup. That's why I have in this top four. Like these top four guys, I can put in my lineup every week, and I feel like I'm getting a guaranteed 17 to 25 points, like even on bad days, right? In 2023, he's also only second to CeeDee Lamb in total yards after the catch, which I think is a really underrated part of his game that people don't recognize. They talk about, you know, his catchability, him being like a good route runner and all that. But, I mean, he's so good with the ball in his hands. He's also seventh in yards per route run in 2023. He was fifth in fantasy points per route run. He's just so valuable and so consistent in his role. And he just continues to get better every year, which I think has been really fun to watch. So he's like the last one of my first tier. Yeah, he's, he's built in the lab to play with Jared Goff. Like if you could build a wide receiver for Jared Goff, it's a Cooper Cup. It's an Amon Ross St. Brown. You know, you mentioned Ben Johnson probably leaving next year. I feel pretty confident Dan Campbell is going to have a good OC. Dan Campbell seems pretty I sharp. agree. So I, I feel pretty yeah. confident they'll have a good OC there for him. I'm not too worried about their their personnel changes. Um, but, you know, what about Ahmed Ross St. Brown, you know, has you ranking him one one below Puka? I know it's splitting hairs, but, like, why the difference in Ahmed Ross? Because I think Ahmed Ross the fourth wide receiver on keep trade cut. He's probably the, the consensus number four. If I looked at dynasty nerds and other ranking sites. So why Puka over on raw for you? I think Puka is a, a, a bigger, faster version of ARSB with a better quarterback. That, that that's just as simple as that. Um, and with a more consistent play caller and Sean McVay. So I, <laughs> I feel like they do a lot of the same stuff. First read targets over the middle of the field, yak generated. Mm-hmm. And what Puka did his first season is is kind of similar to what Amon Ra did in the last 10 games of his rookie year, but Puka did it for the whole entire year. So yep. I just think Puka is a, a younger version of Amon Ra St. Brown that's bigger and more explosive, playing in a better offense with a better quarterback. And it's just splitting hairs, dude. I mean, I mean, ARSB is going to remain a favorite for 150 targets and 100-plus receptions every single season he's healthy and playing with Goff. So it, absolutely, it's, it's really just – I think I'm going with the historic season in Puka Nakua and thinking that he can build on top of that. So that that's kind of where I'm at with, with Puka over ARSB. Yeah. For the listeners, I haven't seen Sean's list, but I know you're already at five. I haven't said my five, so I think this is where things are going to get – Really interesting. So your top four, as is, is Justin Jefferson, CeeDee Lamb, Jamar Chase, Puka, Amir Now, Yeah, that's my top five, yeah. And then what is – so my five outside of that, because obviously I don't have Puka in my top five, it's actually A.J. Brown. I had A.J. Brown at six. A.J. Brown's at six. Okay. So let's let, – So we're close on that, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. So I I love A.J.B. Let's – where – why do you have A.J.B. say at five ahead of, of, ahead of Garrett Wilson, who I thought you would have at five here? to be honest. All right. So I have Garrett Wilson next. Um, okay. Uh, AJ Brown's um, production. Like, you know, you could, you could talk about AJ Brown kind of similar to how we talk about Garrett Wilson. And we'll also talk about Olave early in the careers, like muddy quarterback situations while still being able to produce as like an alpha level target. And then when you bring AJ Brown to the Eagles in two seasons, he's totaled 2,900 yards and 18 touchdowns since joining the Eagles. He also has the benefit of like what Jamar Chase does. And he's got one of the young stud QBs in the NFL who's also locked up to a long-term deal. And even with a little bit of Jalen Hurts regression this year, A.J. Brown was still a monster, you know, when he's on the field. I feel like he's kind of in this safe category of fantasy football players that Amon Ross St. Brown is in. I know what I'm getting week in and week out with him. And he's 26, all going to be 27 going into the season. So he's like the oldest wide receiver I have in my top five. He's actually the second oldest on this list, but like, that's your prime. You know, he's still entering his prime playing with a really good quarterback and he's the number one option. He has such a, like, he has a longer and like more, like, what's the word I'm looking for? Like he has a more reputable body of work. than track Garrett, record. Olave, he has, He's got a, he's like, got a yeah. track record of, of being a consistent fantasy performer. Like since his rookie year, he, he's cleared 17 plus fantasy points per game in three out of four seasons. And the only year that he didn't was his last year in Tennessee where he was like injured throughout the whole year. So this guy's been putting up 
fantasy points for four out of five seasons because his his second half of his rookie year was special so he he's been very good in fantasy for for almost five years now since he stepped on a field and like you just like throw out all the metrics like aj brown passes my eye test for football every time i watch him play like i watch him i'm like that's a fucking wide receiver right there. He's, he's built really like T.O. He's built like Terrell Owens, and he's got the attitude of T.O. too. He's, he's got the prima donna wide receiver vibe. You, you know, he, and he's I love backed that. it up, too. He's backed it up, too. Um, I think your wide receivers, like your elite wide receivers, need to be some type of prima donna like to be successful in the league. Like I'm all in on wide receivers who have a little bit of an attitude problem. Attitude or just lunch pail wide receiver, just like like I need you to yeah I need, no in between yeah I need the guy either just like needs to get buckets and be gritty or he just needs to be like the biggest like prima donna on the sidelines. So right now we're only kind of like one or two off in the rankings here. But what is what is your seven? Since you're you've got Puka pushed up, so what is your seven after AJ Brown? I got Garrett Wilson, um, and I I'm not pandering to you at all. I I kind of was looking for ways to push him down because I was I was being a little bit of a hater, but I I don't think you can. Like I I really don't. He said 140 plus targets and 1,000 yards in back to back seasons to open his career with some of the worst imaginable QB play possible, <laughs> and and that kind of just tells us that Garrett Wilson has the potential to break fantasy football when he's able to get a real QB like. How good would Garrett Wilson be if Matthew Stafford was his quarterback? He right? probably had like, two thousand yards. Like I'm, I'm not trying to be biased. Yeah, like I've yeah, heard yeah. other people make that comment, and yeah, I think from a number standpoint, I sat here and like I tried my best to remove all my Jets bias, and like I, I had trouble putting him this high, like especially above my next player who has like historic production at the wide receiver position. But if I factor in age. And circumstance, like you said, it's so easy to make an argument from him. He's the second youngest wide receiver on this list, only behind Puka. He was the NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year with Zach Wilson, Mike White, and Joe Flacco playing QB behind a terrible offensive line. This year, he posted 1,000 yards receiving with Tim Boyle, Zach Wilson, and Trevor Simeon. And then if you just go look at the 2023 usage, he is one of, if not the biggest positive regression candidates based off expected fantasy points and total point production. And like, the QB position for him is uncertain down the line in his career, right? But if I just look at the next two years, he probably gets A-Rod back in 2024. And unless they win a Super Bowl, I bet we get an Aaron Rodgers back for 2025 as well, too. And, like, we're really expecting Garrett Wilson to become his next Devontae Adams, right? So it's easy to say, like, oh, his point production per game is not great, you know. But if I know the situation he's produced in, it's pretty easy for me to have him set just based off age and, like, capable skill talent level it's so easy for me to like put him right here knowing what could be in the future and is aaron Rodgers going to be that guy in at age 40 i don't know but we're we're talking about he needs to just he doesn't be even need average to be. he just needs to be yeah. an average quarterback because garrett wilson's first read target share is, is top five and if you've heard us talk about first read target share it's really the key to fantasy football if your wide receiver is getting the first read targets they're just going to be an alpha there it's where all the fantasy points are going in the passing game it's all there for garrett wilson we just need someone to be just even remotely competent for him to hit home and yeah. and because of that you got to bet on talent in, in dynasty sometimes and uh talent over situation and I, I think wilson's seven for a reason there for me who do you have at seven this was tricky for me and i found it hard to do so because i like to factor in age when it comes to dynasty but how do you not have Tyree Kill as a top 12 dynasty wide receiver option, right? Like from an age standpoint, he's the oldest player on the list. He'll be 30 when he enters Next in this year. season. And, yeah. and he's made comments himself that his career could be winding down. Uh, talks about potentially only playing a couple of years. But like age aside, he still looks like he's at the peak of his football po like powers. Yeah, Just set a career high. Led the league in receiving at 29 years old, has had at least 20 points per game in the last two seasons and 17 points per game in the 2021 season. In 2023, he averaged 112 receiving yards per game, and he was just short of averaging a touchdown a game as well. Like that is an insane season at 29 years old. And until I see otherwise or see a drop off, I'm not going to have him like rank down just because of his age. He's also in a really unique situation where. The offense is so catered to his best skill set. And it's like, let's get this guy in the open field, 
use your elite speed and acceleration and take off once you have the ball. And like his ball tracking skills are like second to none in the league, plays above his size all the time, crazy yak ability. And whether I like to or not, like this is the offense that brings the best out of Tyreek every Sunday and puts him in so many favorable scoring situations. It's hard for me to not include him in this list. Yeah, and we talk about first read target share. It's Devontae Adams and Tyreek Hill, and that's how it's been for the past like two seasons, right? So I have Tyreek Hill as my wide receiver eight in Dynasty. I don't care if he's age 30. Um, aging out is a real thing, right? Players hit the age cliff. Age 30 for wide receivers is kind of similar to, you know, age 27 or 20, yeah, 27 for running backs. But look, when you're a Hall of Fame caliber player, Hall of Fame players tend to avoid the age cliff a lot longer than non-Hall of Famers. Just look at Derrick Henry. I think Tyree Kill is is like that for wide receivers. So I, I think you're at least getting two to three more good years out of Tyree Kill. And before Absolutely. he injured his before he injured his ankle in week 14 against the Titans, Keegan, Tyree Kill had finished top five in weekly PPR scoring in nine out of 12 weeks. Yeah. It, it, he, <laughs> he had a realistic shot at the greatest wide receiver season of all time before he sprained his ankle. I, I really he, think he might come back and get 2,000 yards he, next he year. Could. He could. I think could. he's going to stick true to his work. <laughs> we talked about a little bit about Mike McCarthy building out the entire Cowboys passing offense around CeeDee Lamb. Mike McDaniel built the entire Dolphins offense, not just passing offense, the entire offense around Cheetah Motion, where he moves uh, Tyree Kill all along the formation before he snaps. So... I think with Mike McDaniel in place, and I think with Tua, a lot of people like to hate Tua, right? We can talk about again about, you know, is this guy a Super Bowl caliber quarterback, whatever. Tua is fully capable of getting his wide receivers the ball in this offense to generate fantasy points. So I, I'm more than happy with Tua and Mike McDaniel and Tyreek Hill for this situation. So I've, I've easily got him as a top eight dynasty and wide receiver. Uh, white tight, tight, top eight wide receiver in dynasty this season. Tight, 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 tight. <laughs> I, th I think this is where we're going to diverge because you've got Puka at nine, right? So Puka's your ninth. So Yes. So you have, again, mine is Justin Jefferson, C.D. Lamb, Jamar Chase, Puka Nakua, ARSB, A.J. Brown, Garrett Wilson, Tyree Kill. Yours is Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, C.D. Lamb, Amon Ross St. Brown, A.J. Brown, Garrett Wilson, Tyree Kill, and Puka Nakua, right? Puka is nine, yes. Puka so I nine. have my eight spot. Okay. So who who do you have at eight? It's it's another wide receiver who's played and succeeded in really murky quarterback situations, and it's Chris Olave, the Ohio okay. State teammate of Garrett Wilson. He's the third youngest wide receiver on this list, like barely being younger than Garrett Wilson, has also started his career with back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons, having at least 72 receptions and 119 targets in each season. This year, Derek Carr and him just couldn't seem to get on the same page. Like There was so much meat left on the yes. bone for Chris Olave's fantasy it season. It was so weird. So Sixth weird. in air yards this year, like had an A dot of 13.3, saw 32 deep targets. Like they just could not connect on that part of the game that I think Chris Olave is very good. But outside of the deep stuff, he's such a polished and talented wide receiver. He had a case for offensive rookie of the year and was obviously beat out by Garrett Wilson, but he's going to enter this season as only 24 years old. He'll get a second year with Derek Carr. Or maybe some of those chemistry things can be figured out. And we've seen Derek Carr support wide receivers from a fantasy standpoint. And I just think he has the skills and talent to be a top 15 wide receiver in the NFL for several years to come. You know, like him and Garrett Wilson are so similar to me in terms of potential. I just want to see them with a good quarterback or a consistent quarterback is all it takes in fantasy. I have a lave at 11. Um, I, I've, I think the talent is pretty undeniable on talent and age alone. I, I probably have him ahead of the guys that I have him in front of. Um, but it, it's been a bit disappointing so far for Olave, not at yards, not at like receptions, not at the underlying metrics, but just in fantasy points, it's been a little bit disappointing. And I, I drafted him pretty heavily in, in fantasy this year. He, he was pretty good, but he, he, he wasn't that good. You know what I mean? I, I drafted him at the end of the second round, early third turn. And I, it was weird. He just couldn't find that consistency with Derek Carr, even though Derek Carr found it with Rashid Shahid who I think is like a really good sleeper receiver. I think the thing with Alave that's holding him back is touchdown regression. 
you know, he's going to run into like eight or nine touchdowns here pretty soon. And then all of a sudden mm-hmm. his fantasy numbers are just going to spike, right? Because he's only scored, I think, four touchdowns, I think four and five in back-to-back years. Considering his yardage, his air yard share, his first read target share, his total target share, like you would think this guy would have more touchdowns, but it just hasn't really happened yet. And they're bringing in a new offensive coordinator. So maybe they overhaul this offense, they bring in fresh blood, and then all of a sudden, you know, Chris Olave is kind of a buy low candidate. Yeah, and like the touchdowns will help so much. I mean, he's had marks of 13.2 fantasy points per game in 2022, and then yeah. this year was 14 and a half, which is pretty good considering the fact that he's not scoring a ton of touchdowns and, and playing with the kind of lackluster QB uh, play and just inconsistency in his relationship with quarterbacks that's throwing the ball to him. But can't deny the talent. I just think he's an absolute stud. If I can make the case for Garrett Wilson being top eight, in my mind personally, I feel like Chris Olave should also have that case made for him as well. I, I'm a big fan. I'm a, I'm a big fan, but I've turned into a bigger fan of the guy that I've I've got ahead of him now at uh, at wide receiver nine, and that's uh, that's the 25 year old Houston Texan Nico Collins. I've got him as the wide receiver nine uh, in, in dynasty right now, and and that's high. His keep trade cuts 11. He's been flying up in value. So obviously, people are are wisening up to who Nico Collins is as a player. We dropped a, a series, a two-part series of January buys and sells. Nico Collins was my my featured January buy, and I went through the whole process of why he's a super talented player, regardless of CJ Stroud. Like his year two yards per route run, playing with some of the worst quarterbacks in the NFL, was still higher than like Calvin Ridley and T Higgins in 2023. He he led the Texans when him and Tank Dell were playing together in pretty much every single metric outside of touchdowns, right? So it, Nico, when him and Tank were on the field, Nico was the clear wide receiver one. He was the 1A to Tank's 1B. Um, the, the, the thesis, again, in, in Dynasty, in my opinion, with Nico, he's tied to a top five QB in, in, in CJ Stroud. Whether or not Bobby Slowick continues to be their head coach, he was a first-time play caller. So if Bobby Slowick comes back next year to call plays, I, I think he's going to improve. And I think the play calling is going to get better. And I think things are going to open up for this Texans offense. No more run, run, pass, no, Bobby. No, no more run, more pass. Uh, he, he's still, Nico's still only 25 years old. And this stat absolutely blew my mind. So since 2013, only four wide receivers have had an individual season where they have cleared three yards per route run. Those receivers are Tyreek Hill, Cooper Cup, Julio Jones, and Nico Collins in 2023. Crazy lists to be on for yeah. him crazy list i think we've only begun to scratch the surface of what nico collins is able to accomplish in fantasy football i love the fact that he's an excellent receiver at the point of catch and he's also just nasty in the yak game so i'm i'm all in on nico collins as my wide receiver nine did he make your top 12 he didn't i have some fringe guys we'll talk about when we get to the end that are uh, right out to the top 12 and to be honest when we go over my 11th and 12th wide receivers I think I might just have like, I don't know what it is, like maybe just some take lock on those two, but we'll discuss uh, some people I had on the fringe outside of this. But we know my number nine was Puka Nakua. Yeah. Um, so now I think we're officially all caught up and and we're at 10 here. Um, yes. And my 10, uh, playing to my my boss's liking here is uh, Brandon Ayuk. I have catapulted him very high. Okay, I've got him in, in 12. I think the case for him is just like we talked about it on um, the top 50 episode again that I'll, I'll mention that again, but just like he's so efficient, like so efficient with, with the wall in his hand. Like, let me rip you some stats from 2023. Second in EPA, second in yards per reception, second in yards per target, so. third in yards per team pass attempt, and third in yards per route run. Amazing, right? Now let's talk about it. He did that all while being only 30th in targets. And 53rd in routes run. Like when the ball gets in his hands, he's making the most of it. It's crazy to compare those numbers, like where he ranks, and look at the amount of usage he actually gets in real football. And also on a per route basis, he ranks seventh in the NFL in fantasy points per route run in 2023. A slow start to his career, and Ayuk has established himself as one of the league's best and, like I said, most efficient wide receivers in the NFL. And also, Let's just attach him to one of the best offensive minds in football and put him in one of the friendliest fantasy environments as a skilled player you could imagine. I, dude, 
Brandon Ayuk's 75 receptions are tied for the fewest receptions a wide receiver gaining 1,300 yards or more has had over the past 10 years. So Efficient. Yeah. His 105 targets are by far the fewest. Right? So we're going to run into some haters. All right, Keegan, they're going to say, that efficiency is not replicable year over year. And it's probably right. You're probably not going to run that hot. However, what's more likely that Brandon Ayuk sees more opportunities <laughs> <laughs> the same opportunities or less opportunities as he ages into his physical exactly prob- probably more likely that he's going to get the rock more and look it's pretty simple the 49ers have some financial decisions they're going to have to make they're going to have to pay brock purdy and they're going to have to pay brandon Ayuk. i personally again i'm a niner fan i personally think they're going to do that i think they're going to pay both of them if that's I the agree. case if that's the case you're going to see guys like debo or kittle age out or or leave the team right or uh, unless they birdie signs for a, a pretty low level deal whatever i think you at least have a year or two left where Ayuk's competing for targets with other alphas but we're in a situation here by the time Ayuk's 28 or 29 he is the clear heir apparent to julio jones in kyle shanahan's offense like i, I really think that that's a possibility for Ayuk. if it isn't and they just trade him which would break my heart but it's definitely on the table uh he's going to go to a team and they're going to turn him into cd lamb right he's going to be the focal point of their entire offense so either way, I think Brandon Ayuk is going to ascend into a position where he's probably arguably one of the best wide receivers in the league, not only from just like a I watch tape bro stance, but as in like a, <laughs> these statistics are absolutely nuts stance. So I think they he's are. top 12 no matter what. I've got him at 12 because I think his status is a little bit murky, right? And, you know, there could be a little like volatility if the efficiency doesn't remain the same or the volume doesn't go up, right? So he's an easy top 12 guy, in my opinion. Uh, but I just had him at 12. So that's that's where I'm at with BA. And I love him. He's such a talented and what's player. So what's your 10? Um, I can't believe I, I did this, but I, I've got DJ Moore at wide receiver 10. Um, Man, you know, I, I, he's like on my fringe list. I, I really thought about putting him in here and I just, something couldn't bring me to do it. But he probably should be a top 12 it, dynasty wide receiver. He's he's a highly effective wide receiver, and he's been a highly effective wide receiver since he's came into league. But his his fantasy ceiling's been capped by really bad QB play for the better part of his career. Like we ran through this in the offseason. It's it's a who's who of these quarterbacks suck ass. Um, and he's still been able future to future really, trivia <laughs> all stars. In, it's it's nuts. He, he's caught some passes from out some some outrageous names. I think both the I mean, Allen's, he caught passes Brandon, from Kyle, and Kyle. Allen. Yeah, and he, <laughs> and he played with cam newton but it was like the my shoulders off the bone cam newton who couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat so it was like dj moore was just always getting open always winning downfield but he didn't have quarterbacks who could throw him the ball downfield and and you his, know, his knock was also the touchdown production too like yeah. he never amassed more than four touchdowns in a season and then yeah last what did he year, do he, this year? He, he, he scored seven last year in those random games he played with sam darnold so he went off when after all the teams that drafted him were were eliminated but like this year he gets a real quarter <laughs> he gets a real quarterback and we can put parentheses around real whatever our opinions on fields i'm a fan aiden's a fan whatever but you like come on this isn't like this isn't dak prescott all right but this is his first like real quarterback who is capable of throwing the ball downfield and and no shocker, he posts career highs in receptions, yards, TDs, and fantasy points. And he spent a quarter of the season catching passes from something named Tyson Bajan. So, like, his, his outlook his outlook remains strong regardless, like, because it's kind of a murky offseason. Like, this Shane Waldron signing, I think, is a big deal. Shane Waldron's designed and built some, some pretty effective offenses with the Seahawks. Then he used to be a part of Sean McVay's offense back in the day, right? So Waldron brings that Shanahan style. He has some really creative stuff in the run game. So I think this is a big deal for the Bears offense. And his first read target share was was top five. Um, his downfield ability was incredibly impressive. And we're looking at a situation here where if it's just fields and they bring in another wide receiver, they draft a defensive player and they kind of run it back, I think he's going to have a really good year. If it's Caleb Williams and they draft another wide receiver and this offense becomes kind of a juggernaut in the making, I think he could even take a step forward on what he produced last season. So I just feel really good about this Bears offense, to be honest. And I feel really good about DJ Moore, who's established himself as the clear alpha in it. And I think whoever they take, whether it be like, I think like a Roma Dunze, 
um, if they were to take him at nine. I think he pairs pretty well with DJ Moore. And if they were to trade back um, and they were to take a Malik Neighbors, I think that guy fits really well with DJ Moore too. So I, I just feel like he's somebody that's going to take advantage of this offseason the most. And I'm trying to get in front of it and have more top 10. So um, shout out Aiden for that one. Yeah, I can agree with everything that you're saying there. Like I said, he's kind of a, a, a fringe guy um, for me on this outside of top 12. And it's just, he's still pretty young and he's the number one option in his offense, which in, in makes my six years and he's 27. I don't know how he did it. But yeah. it's, it's insane. Which um, kind of makes my next two rankings like, you know, using the argument like wide receiver one options. Like I haven't gone over anybody who's second fiddle in their own offense, right? But at 11, this is where it starts. For me, and uh, to be honest, 11 and 12, I don't know who should be ranked higher. They probably are the exact same for me. I wish I could just put them both at 11, but it's Devonta Smith at 11 and then Jalen Waddle at 12. My toughest, my toughest omissions, my, my, uh, my toughest omissions um, were Jalen Waddle and uh, Devonta Smith. So uh, if I had to pick one, I think I'd pick Smith over Waddle. Remember how I said Brandon Ayuk had the tied for the second fewest receptions for a 1300 yard rece- season? Um, the other guy was Jalen Waddle. So highly efficient player, but Tyreek just takes all the targets, man. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe you're just waiting for Tyreek to age out, but I just think in the meantime, he's out of my top 12 for that reason. Yeah. I just like, they have a pretty good body of work for being, and now Devonta Smith gets one year without AJ Brown. Right. Uh, so he did have a year of experience being like the go-to alpha, but Devonta is only 25 years old. will turn 26 in the 2024 season. And he just has like a combination of age, production, and skill that I think warrants him to be in this top 12. And in a secondary role, quote unquote, he still had back to back a thousand yards, seven touchdown seasons while having at least 112 targets and 81 receptions. You know, it's not like he's getting ignored because he plays with AJ Brown. And we probably wanted to see a little bit more out of Devonta Smith. Like he didn't take that leap that we're typically looking for for wide receivers at this stage of their career, but. I can chalk that up to Jalen Hurts regression and just Eagles in general regressing as an offense. I still, everything I said about Hurts remains the same when I talked about AJ Brown. I still think he's one of the better uh, young QBs in the league. And Hurts is locked up long term. So we can expect good stability at the QB uh, position for them. And, you know, catch rate goes up from 69% to 72.3% from 2022 to 2023. It's also his final year of his rookie deal. I'm pretty sure the Eagles are exercised his fifth option and most likely there will be an extension worked out, but he's just such a smooth route runner has always played way above his size on downfield targets. And yes, his upside is capped, but there's a wide receiver. That's the second option. He's still getting a thousand yards and seven touchdowns in a season on like 81 receptions. I mean, that's, that's good bang for your buck, baby. And like, like I said, he's young, he's got a ton of upside. If, if the Eagles just even take a slight better step, you know, Devonta Smith gets better, A.J. Brown gets better. Like, it was really hard for me to leave him out, even though he is a second option. Man, I might be too low on Waddle, dude. I'm now looking through Waddle's first three years in his career. Over 1,000, over 1,300, over 1,000, six touchdowns, eight touchdowns, four touchdowns. I, I think yeah. I'm just souring a little bit on on the fact that Tyreek just, just dominates target share so much in this offense, but... I mean, you, you look at Waddle, 243 PPR points, 259, 198. Uh, the 198 is really buoyed by the fact that he only played 14 games in 2023. You look at Devontae Smith, 17 games. There's a rookie, 185 points. 17 games as a sophomore, 254 points. 16 games in 2023, 227. Both excellent, excellent options, in my opinion. Um, I just think like you could make Devontae Smith an alpha if he were to go be the number one in an offense. I, I just don't know if if Jalen Waddle would be. And I know that might be hard to prove. And the big playability is just so um, incredibly enticing with Jalen Waddle. Um, oh, that's tough, dude. I it's, Those are tough omissions. They're, they're both so it's- good, age 25, you know. Yeah, they're the exact same age, like same year. Like they're both about to enter into their like like contract end of the year, rookie years, right? Like they are both such amazing options of the wide receiver position. And like, sure, if Tyree Kill is in the offense, like that's obviously going to cap some of his ceiling. But like, you know, 2023, it's not like he was like some schmuck, right? He's still the 10th most fantasy points per route run. He was fifth in yards per route run and also 12th in total yards after the catch. Like 
he exceeds in this offense that's tailor made for Tyreek because he has the same insane skill set of wild speed that you can't see just anywhere and an insane acceleration, like an offense set up for success. But like you mentioned, three a thousand yard receiving season straight, getting over a hundred targets in each season, at least 72 receptions. I mean, the guy is good at football. And if Tyreek's only gonna be around for one more year or two more years, why would they not? extend waddle like after this year comes up like sure they'll exercise the option but like they probably want to get an ex- like extension done mike mcdaniel's still there why would i want to bet against that and maybe tyreek only plays two years then jalen waddles like at the kind of peak of his prime age wise and just like physicality wise i like keeping jalen waddle in here for the bet on like there's more to come for him yeah it, yeah it's tough there's, they're tough omissions man the receivers are so good so deep they're um, so good i mean the, the guys that I have outside that I'm yeah, looking at, are, are who you is deep? your? I guess yeah. Who who is your toughest submission? And I've got I've got another question for you. Um, for to to wrap things up, DJ Moore was really really tough. Like I wanted to put him in there so bad, and like this is just a full circle moment for me after going like full fade on the off season on him. But like I wanted to put Michael Pittman in my top twelve. Oh man, so bad. He's legit, he's legit dude. He's so legit by every stat, every metric. Exactly. His role in the offense, like how much he's just gotten better since he's come in the league. Like it was really hard to omit him from my list. And obviously there's like the unknowns of like uh, Marvin Harrison, like, right. Like what do you, what do you do with Maserati Marv in this situation? Where do you put him? But like, there was just a really tough neighbors. Neighbors might be in there too. (laughs) Dude, like, by the end of year, and run, I, I think both those guys are so special. And I'm looking at stats and production, age, and I'm sitting there. I'm like, holy shit. Like, how do I not even have DK knocking on 12? Like, even yeah. in maybe a more down year, like DK is a fringe guy that you have there. And it, it's tough. I mean, it's tough. And then you take in the crop of young rookie wide receivers that are really old that just had good seasons, like Addison, JSN, Zay Flowers. Yeah. You know, what do you do to them? Like, my opinion, like 10 through 25 of wide receivers are all so close. It was really hard to push somebody up into 12 and 11. I think my brain just went to Devonta Smith and Jalen Waddle, who've kind of been like the crown, not crown jewels, but like maybe most consistent on these lists of top dynasty wide receivers for three years now. So I think I just stuck with my gut there, but there's a lot of good omissions. If you had to pick one guy who's not on this list, in the top 12 who will be on this list at the end of next year who would it be my list or just our list in general that we didn't our cover? list in general because I, I have one guy who i think could be on this list at the end of next year man top 12 that's a tough question uh drake london is my guy yeah, dude, I didn't even think about Drake London He's this so year, like good. for this list He's, at all. In and terms he, of young talent in the NFL, man, that guy is ridiculously good. Yeah, he with a better quarterback position, he would have no doubt been in this or list. Just but it didn't even cross my mind. A real offensive coordinator that would just give him a thirty-eight percent first read target share instead of like equally distributing amongst him and Johnny Smith. So um, yeah, I don't, yeah. I don't want to cop out or anything and say like one of the rookies. Like I think I'm gonna, I'm put my chips in on uh, Jordan Addison okay. next year, being like Two fringe Vikings. top twelve guy. Okay. okay. Or Rishi Rice. I think Rishi Rice is someone too. Rice is a good option. Like I, Zay is hard for me to project because I think his point production will always be capped by the type of play that Lamar Jackson has, right? It's like very rare that he's consistently throwing for 300 plus yards. That's just not how they win. So, no. and you need those yards to kind of buoy fantasy production. But I think Addison has a good case, Rishi Rice, um, and obviously the rookies as well too. But I'll go with Addison for mine. All right. Addison. All right. Well, that's going to do it for our top 12 dynasty wide receivers. Thank you all for tuning in. We appreciate you for being a part of the mean team. If you haven't had a chance and you are still listening, go ahead, subscribe to the regression of the mean podcast. We appreciate you. Thank you everybody for tuning in until next time.